So hey everyone, uh, good day, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, I am in Los Angeles and I am on a layover, but I really wanted to take some time to talk to you and kind of update you on what's going on with life and also take some time to talk about something that I've kind of slightly have mentioned over time and that's um, another condition aside of HIV that I'm kind of dealing with and coping with as well. Um, but update, so I have been working out. I know after my last video, a lot of you were like really skeptical of me looking a little bit heavy baby. And um, yeah, I gained weight and um, it happens. Like I'm gonna be real with you. During the winter time, I like to eat. And I, if it's cold outside, I do not like to go to the gym. If I have to go more, if I have to walk to the gym, which typically in New York, because my car the, and the parking situation, I don't like to just drive eight blocks, nine blocks, 10 blocks to have to park and pay for parking just to go back and try to find parking in my own neighborhood. So typically I don't like to go out because yeah, it's cold outside and we've been having nor'easters and snow and anybody got time for that. I'd just rather sit at home and play PlayStation and drink liquor and I'll just be honest with you like I just I kind of let myself slip and um, I think also with being depressed and like having um, something that I want to talk about confidence I just kind of didn't keep an eye on it like I just typically um, I'm I joke around with my friends and you know people that I run into and I'm like I am a typical no shade I'm a Mariah Carey like I'm usually fluctuating with my weight. I know she got the guy, the bypass surgery or whatever she did, the sleeve, and she's lost a lot of weight. Well, daddy's on a budget. He's trying to buy a house. So I don't have those type of resources to be able to do that. So, yeah, so that's pretty much what's going on. And then also, like, so like enjoying my layovers and stuff and just really focusing on school, which I finished up, and um, I'll be graduating in the spring, yay. And um, that's pretty much it. And, you know, like I talked about in the last video, with like dealing with depression, it's been very difficult to um, be on it, you know? And um, the videos have slipped, I'll be real with you, and very transparent with you. And uh, the videos have slipped, the blog, right now I need to deal with it. It's just, I'm, I'm gonna make a decision on it soon because I just don't know. I mean, my thing is just like, it's the confidence issue. Like when you step away from something for so long and then you jump back into it and you, aren't prepared for it, you don't really plan for it, it you lose confidence. You've been gone for a while. I, I've been out of the game and um, I, I lack confidence. I lack, honestly, the um, security of knowing that everything is going to be okay because I'm over critical. I'm overly critical of myself and I'm always beating myself up and trying to be a perfectionist. And uh, I something that I've learned is that you, you can't always be perfect. You, I always just try to just aim for the moon because I reach amongst the, the stars. And that's, that's the reality of it. I mean, I just... I honestly just have had to take a lot of time off. And another thing that I've been dealing with is um, a condition which I've told you about. It's called malaria. And um, I'm going to be, again, giving out new information. Um, I tip recently found out, maybe like a year and a half ago, um, I don't know if you know the story or not, but I was on a layover. Thank God I was in D.C. Um, got really sick to the point where, like, I had a migraine. I couldn't even walk off the aircraft um, because my whole, everything from my mid back down was seizing. Like I just couldn't even move. During the flight, I literally couldn't even do anything. I was just there, suffering. I got to the hotel, thought, okay, well maybe I'm just tired, I'll take, I'll take a nap. Well, I woke up and I had, my neck was like just stiff. I could not move it, I could not see. I was essentially like losing vision. Um, head was pounding. I felt like my head was going to explode. I literally was hitting myself on the head like this. And I was like, this isn't right. So I called my parents, told them I was going to the hospital, um, went to the hospital and uh, basically found out that I had um, HSV2, which if you don't know, it's um, herpes simplex virus, typically the one that we deal with genitally. Um, I haven't really, except only one occasion, haven't had any outbreaks. Um, I typically, what happens to me rather than getting like a cold sore or a, um, I guess you could say like a genital sore, is um, I get attacked on the inside. So the um, HSV virus attacks my um, menin, and your menin is what surrounds your brain. And um, it, it basically causes me to have chronic meningitis attacks, which is when your menin surrounding your brain um, 
becomes inflamed and um, it swells. And when I found out when I was in DC that I was sick, basically my minute around my brain has swelled so much, it was literally pushing against my skull. Um, and that's just something I've, I've had to deal with. And so I've had to take some time to really understand malaria and really truly begin the process of, again, coping with and dealing with having to deal with something else alongside HIV. So now I gotta deal with HSV, now I gotta deal with also, most people don't get this, now I'm getting malaria on top of that. Most people have HSV, the, the majority of the population does. You know, usually they don't really have outbreaks unless they're really stressed out, their immune system is compromised, or they're um, like pregnant or something of that sort. Me, I'm just dealing with malaria, which is, which is a really rare condition that a lot of people don't know about, but quite a lot of people, again, it's not really a huge population, but people deal with it. And it's essentially, um, again, the men surrounding the spinal cord and the brain swell up. And um, I'm just gonna reference some stuff, but um, I had a spinal tap, that's how I found out I had it. Um, there's drug therapies for it. So I'm taking right now a white pill. Let me see if I can find it for you and show you. I take a white pill, which is essentially um, Valtrex. So I take Valtrex. They want me to do it therapeutically once a day. It's worked in terms of major outbreak, but something that I've had to complain to my doctor and continue to advocate with my doctor about is the fact that I still deal with symptoms. And um, so I don't really personally think it's being effective. My doctor is basically saying, well, we'll see, you know, whatever, whatever. But I'm still essentially dealing with like, uh, severe headaches. Um, every now and then I'll get a fever. I'm nauseous often. Um, I don't really vomit, um, but I do have sensitivity to light. So since I, when I came out the hospital, all my sensors, everything from my um, sensory array were messed up. So I, the light would hurt me. Um, too much stimuli around me, like noise or movement, would um, cause me to kind of like have a mini panic attack. I also, um, have sensitivity to sound now. So if I'm in a room and like my husband is behind me, like maybe like two nights ago, he had said something, but it was kind of like a weird way he said it. It kind of freaked me out and I kind of panicked. Um, some noises, if you reach, if you kind of sneak up on me, it, it causes me to get like nauseous. And um, yeah, and, and also I think the bigger thing is just the headaches. I get really bad migraines now every now and then. On top of that, um, the light, like I could be working on the plane in the cabin and someone has their wind, their um, the window open and a, a thing of light would hit my eyes and I just have to stop and take a moment to just get myself together because the light kind of just stops me dead in my tracks. And I've been able to go out and do, and, and like for instance, I've been going back and forth to Dominican Republic. I've been able to go out and not have to wear shades, but you know, typically I've been lucky the past few times that I've gone, it's been cloudy. And when I went to the beach, um, I had sunglasses, so it didn't really bother me. And it was kind of an overcast day as well. And um, yeah, it, it comes and goes. Like usually it'll last a couple of days and it'll leave. And um, it, it, it just, it's mild to severe. I can never really get a hang, like a hang of when it's gonna happen. Um, and it, it sucks, I'm not gonna lie, it sucks. And I think it, it's also, a lot of my friends, I know they know I haven't been reaching out to them and I haven't really been communicating. And it's honestly, I can tell you, um, and I'm just looking over kind of like the symptoms so I can make sure you understand. And I'll link, I'll link the website. It's called malaritsmeningitis.org. Um, a lot of times I just don't have the energy. I, I just don't have the energy. And I think my doctor also was fearful that I um, had uh, lupus and we ran some tests and that wasn't the case. But um, she thinks it's somewhat associated with um, living with HIV and having my body having to deal with malaria it's, um, pretty much on a constant basis. And because I'll never, my, because I found out I had HIV so late, um, my immune system will never be 100%. And that's fine, I'm okay with that, I'll live with that. But my T cell count and my, I guess you could say the defense of my body will never be always in peak form. So we, and she's an infectious disease specialist, We've, we talked about it and I had another doctor um, before I got my new doctor who basically told me, hey, look, the, you're just, just something you're gonna have to deal with. Your T cell count is never gonna be in the thousands. It's never gonna be over. You may peak around, you know, I don't even know the number. You, you may peak right above um, a threshold of we're saying you're okay and kind of bounce back down. You'll never be 
having a thousand plus T cell T cell count. And I don't like. I mean, I'm gonna look up right now and see um, when the last time I what my last T cell count was. You know what? I don't even want to look it up because I don't even know how to access the account. <laughs> anyway, so that that's what I've been dealing with. And to my friends, um, people that have supported me, fans, it, and just overall family, I'm I'm sorry if I haven't been there. Um, it, it's just been hard and dealing with having to deal with this again and going through the process of dealing with HIV and coming in terms with that and um, marrying and dealing with the complexities of being married and not really truly being completely transparent with his family because of their stigma with HIV. Um, it has been difficult and um, now also dealing with malarids and how that has impacted my life and just working a lot and just needing and starting the process of taking more time to myself. And so I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry if I haven't been there for you. I'm sorry if I haven't been 100%. I'm sorry if I don't call or text back. Um, some days are good days where you may get a random text and a random conversation. And some days are just not good days. And I've been working um, to go back to the gym and try to get more energy. Um, on a waiting list to see a therapist and um, it's just the process and I that's why I've been trying to get back into the gym eat right because when you live with a Dominican you typically um, I have typically my experience has been just eating awesome great food and that has caused the weight to come on um, and, and that's and that's just what I've been focused on and just trying to find the positives out of life and I saw an interview on TV with Oprah and she said um, Every day she wakes up, the first thing she says is just like, thank you. And that, that's what I've been trying to incorporate into my life is just being thankful of every moment. I, I could be in a situation where, again, if you watch watched my first video that I've done, I could have easily neglected the fact that I could have potentially had HIV or ignored my symptoms and just been completely apathetic about it and have died. So I'm still here and I'm still pushing on in life. And I think this is a testament that we all should look at. In life, you always aren't going to ha have it easy. It's not going to be perfect. And regardless of what you're dealing with, the cancer diagnosis, a fear of having HIV, a fear of, um, hell, even a, a lupus diagnosis or any other thing that we're dealing with, you just have to continue to press on because regardless if, you, if you're if you upset or you're depressed, the sun's still going to rise. She's still going to set. And you have a choice to either be involved in and be in life or just want to stop in your tracks and that's you're not going to get anywhere with that and that's pretty much it i mean i've just been pretty much focused on traveling the world i've been picking up a lot of international trips even when i fly domestic i've been just trying to enjoy myself i've been spending time um just relaxing and traveling and now i'm trying to just go to dominican republic once a month or once every couple of months and just have a couple of days four or five days to just breathe in that nice island air and just be on the beach or just be with family and friends and just relaxing as well as learning Spanish. So that's something I'm trying to do as well. And that's that's all. And I again I'm sorry if I haven't been there. I'm sorry if I um have lacked making videos and I, I always come back and say, I'm gonna make more and I'm just gonna be real with you. It's a process and I'm I'm gonna commit at least one video a month, but I can I can't guarantee I can do more than that. And I, I think that's fair. And with a blog, I'll have an update coming soon in terms of what's going on with that. I have to make a adult decision about that, and that's kind of hard because when you put so much work into something, it's hard to make a decision in terms of what to do. But I think it's about building my confidence enough up, like building my confidence up to be able to make a decision and stand by it. Um, and it, it comes down with like, you, you put so much work into something, it's like your baby. and. When you step out of something, then you come back, it's like, I'm completely lost. Like, I'm like, where do I go? What do I do? Um, I've been out of the game for about a year. Like, it's, is anybody even still listening? So it's, I know I'm not the only one out there. And especially with malaria, it's in, it sucks. Like, it's, it's, um, it's just been difficult. And I just think that, I'm blessed to continue to be living and doing what I have to do and advocating for myself. I think that's a big thing. But outside of that, it's just been very difficult still coping and dealing with it and dealing with the side effects on a, on a daily basis. Um, 
and we'll get th- I'll get through it, and we'll get through it together. And I'll continue to be here. If you need me, if you're dealing with something, please reach out to me. Um, again, usually if you reach out to me through email or social media, you'll find me faster. So like Plus Life with Pat on um, Snapchat or Instagram, and as well as Twitter. So if you if you go ahead and use those outlets, we'll be just fine and we can get in touch. But without further ado, I'm, I'm going to just wrap it up because I just wanted to just come and tell you and talk to you and and tell you, really just give you a heads up in terms of what was going on. So I love you. Again, I'm here if you need me. I'm still going to make videos. I'm enjoying life. You know, positivity is everything and that's how I've taken it after I've cried and have my moments. But, you know, all is well and we're going to get through it. So take care. Love each other. Love yourself.